Ladies and gentlemen, we continue with 12 rounds scheduled, and it will be for the WBC International Silver Heavyweight Championship. Brought to you by Frank Warren on behalf of Queensberry Promotions, along with their great sponsors, 32 Red and Foot Asylum. It is sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, steward in charge, Robin Smith, along with the World Boxing Council, President Mauricio Suleiman. Supervisor is Hossein Wishi. Our three judges scoring on a 10 point must system will be Victor Lachlan of Scotland, David Billow Surf Poic of Canada, and Eddie Papo of Ghana. Our referee in charge will be Mark Lyson of England. Introducing to you first the challenger fighting tonight out of the red corner. He's wearing red with gold and weighed in at 19 stone, seven pounds. Fighting out of Burbank, California by way of Bucharest, Romania. He brings a professional record consisting of 16 wins four defeats with nine of his 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former world title challenger, Rasvan Kujanu. And his opponent across the ring, he is the defending champion fighting tonight out of the blue corner. He's wearing white with black and weighed in at 17 stone, 10 pounds. Hailing from Natwich, Cheshire, England. He is undefeated with 14 wins. 11 of his 14 wins come by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the reigning and defending WBC International Silver Heavyweight Champion, Nathan Gorman. Okay, boys, just come to you both in the dressing room. You know what I expect of you. Okay, obey my commands, stay professional, and protect yourselves at all times, boys. Good luck to you both. Well, on paper, anyway, this is the biggest test of Nathan's career. His 15th pro fight, and Kojanu, as you've heard, a former world title challenger, fought Joseph Parker. Came in at late notice, 15 days, I think it was, to fight Parker. For it, when he was the WBO champion and Parker he went the distance with him subsequently he's been knocked out by Luis Ortiz but when he fancies a fight he can be interesting and as you see he's big he's tall and if he can establish a jab then he could give Chuck Gorman a few things to think about but Gorman for a big man stands around about six foot four he really is very mobile and creates loads of angles and a, a good-looking boxer yeah, and he's had, and he's had a good apprenticeship. He hasn't had all those walkovers like you see so often, which is fine. He's had some decent tests in, in those 14 fights to date. Oh, it's lovely. Fantastic work. Left hook to the body, right uppercut, left hook over the top. And it's the variety of his work and the speed of his attacks that is most impressive on Gorman. He's not a massive one punch hitter. I asked him during the week whether he was concerned at all about fighting the bigger guy. And he said, well, no, because I've been sparring so much against Tyson Fury. Tracy, exactly. Oh, that's a shot. Kojanu doesn't have the hand speed of Gorman that much, we can see already. No, but what he has in the pack, he, he, he keeps a tight defence. I know he likes to control with his left hand, though, but when, when people are coming back, he kisses his hands out and he has good timing. So sometimes timing can outdo the speed if you can if you can time you time those attacks, fire back a right hand. Based in, based in California now, Kojanu. And when Alex Leopai, who was originally going to be fighting Gorman, pulled out, Kojanu, who had originally been going to fight Daniel Dubois last week, Dubois picking up a virus, couldn't fight. He steps in and Probably a better test for Gorman than Leopai would have been. Well, maybe. I mean, Leopai was a, a decent test as well, to be honest. It's a different style, though, I think. Yeah, a lot smaller, yeah. indeed. Kojanu, <laughs> very experienced as a, as a sparring partner as well as a fighter. He's been in with many of the top names. 
sparred extensively with, extensively with Vladimir Klitschko. It's a lovely start here from Gorman, though. He hasn't come out like a lunatic, but he started fast using that speed. But they're still taking his time, you know, he's looking for the, looking for the openings, and when, once he lands with the shot, he's then those combinations go, there are plenty of feints, which we always like to see, of course. I think by his own admission, he wasn't too happy with his performance against Kamel Sokolovsky in his last fight, who he'd fought before. It was kind of a, a treading water kind of fight. And when you stop somebody, you say, no, I, I would imagine, you expect you're going to do it again, and he never quite did that, so you would have been disappointed. But I think he's, no, I think he's been getting slowly better and better. So, again, yeah, just you know, disguise that, that lead left hook. So he's got Quigg sitting on the far side of the ring behind Francis. Warren next to Paul Speak, Ricky Hatton's old manager. Scott Quigg, of course, very interested indeed in the main event tonight, but another round there for Nathan Gorman. Yeah, a fantastic start there from Gorman. Good. Let's watch again some of the action from the second round. Nice right hand through the guard. Yeah, it's a lovely variety, isn't it? He starts with the left of the body, just works his way up the ladder then. See there, a lovely uppercut through the guard. But he doesn't. He doesn't just quit on with like two French combinations like most heavyweights would. And he lets those. He lets those flurries go with threes and fours. And I think that's quite impressive from Gorman. So, second round coming up, a nice, comfortable opener for Nathan Gorman, boxing really well. Likes his opponents to come at him, really. Like Sean, big, sexy Turner did. Yeah. And again, see what a good test that was for a heavyweight early in his career. And I know and he came through it, you know, in an impressive fashion, of course. That's been the ten-round distance before, when he fought Dominic Akinladi. Another fantastic test. Yeah. Another undefeated kid. You know, it, it, you can go through his record and you, you can add a fault, to be honest. And he's uh, almost disarmingly charming outside the ring. He's a good talker, he really is. He's a dad as well. Married his childhood sweetheart. He's got young Nathan. Doing a bit of a George Foreman, he called all his kids George. <laughs> Georgina. And he's been sparring Derek Chisora in the run-up to this one. He saw that that feint or something. He's needed with the left hook. He's having success with, success with it, of course. Go on and just make sure he just don't overplay his hand a little bit. So just maybe a little feint, double, double the jab with the pushing back. Reminder oh, coming back from Kozinu there, solid right hand. Nice little left hook on the top as well there from Gorman. Well, Kozinu needs to get, get that jab in, in Gorman's face all the time to stop him from jumping into attacks. Being the taller guy, you've got to use that reach here advantage. And he's not doing it, because look at that, being jumping in with the lead left hook there. And he, might, and he might not have the, the one punch power to, to trouble this guy right now, but it, you know, it, it all. In a 10 round or 12 round fight, it all ticks away. Just chips away the resistance. Cozinu was in against Luis Ortiz last time out. Ortiz, who came so close That's to good. beating Deontay Wilder. Lovely combination there. And back comes Gorman. It was a fantastic. A couple of words right, as well. well it was a fan, fan, from Cozinu, it was a fantastic right hand in that combination. That did, that did land. Flush on the chin there of Gorman. Just showing you he got a little bit in, in the locker when he wants to when he wants to show it. He's certainly a unit, weighs the better part of 20 stones. 1970 weighed in for this one. He's a big lad. Nice little left hook there from Kozinu as well. Bell goes to end the second round. 
first round clearly to Nathan Gorman and probably doing enough in the second yeah, as well. Yeah, I think Kojinu having his moment. Well, well Kojinu had, had finished, the, finished the fight fantastic. It just, he just left a little bit too late to, to pull the trigger, I felt. But yeah, I think Gorman did most of the work for most of the round. But there was just signs there in the second half of the round you know, that he that he got a guy who can fight when he wants to. Kojinu with Joe Pennington and James Paisley in his corner. Work. You want work, he's yeah. not working you. Two rounds, two rounds, one, two. Start working, it, how working. Yeah. So you see, wonderful sight that Manchester Arena is, those huge screens, even if you're right at the back in the bleachers, you'll be seeing the ring and also be seeing precisely what you're seeing on your screens wherever you're watching. Good lead left took there from Kojinu as well. He needs a bit more. Like the corner was telling you, you're being at work, so you're two rounds down. So, listen, he's not a journeyman, he's still an ambitious fighter, so he needs to fight like one. If you were to take away Gorman's undefeated record, it would certainly be a very credible in which win indeed for Kojinu. And it'd be interesting to see whether or not uh, he would still be on the potential hit list of Daniel Dubois. Yeah, that would be interesting if he does get, if he does get the win. Will he be avoided? No. Oh, good left, double left hook there from Gorman. Well, now, what's the referee going to do about that? Well, but to be honest, the left hooks were not, weren't on the back of the head. I think the punch before might have been, but the left hook certainly wasn't. Unless the referee said break, Gorman's allowed to throw. Gorman trying to really throw some punches in, and Kojanu suggesting that the head was in there as well and the referee didn't want to know he said get on with it good engine he's shown so far as well Gorman he looked really busy Kushinu really tried to wind up with that uppercut which whistled through thin air that's the end of Gorman's nose The great finish in the second round, Kozian, who just haven't tried to build on that. I think Gorman for the world. Oh, lovely from Gorman there. Just a little lean back, long left hook. Shouldn't be able to do that with a guy with a longer reach. He hasn't used his jab particularly effectively, Kozian, has he? No, he's not at all, no. And he struggled with the hand speed so far out of Gorman. Ten-rounder, though, and we're still only in the third. Sorry, a big pardon, a 12-rounder. So just in these moments, the assist where Kozinu should be fighting that jab out, just trying to keep Nathan Gorman off balance a little bit. When Gorman was having the rest, that's when he got to get his work in. He's taking a bit of a rest here as well, isn't he, Nathan Gorman? Yeah, he started at a very fast pace. Exceptionally fast for heavyweights, really fast. Mindful of the fact that it is that longer distance. He's not fought 12 rounds before. He'll have done it in, in the gym, of course, but a different matter when you're out there competitively. Yeah, and of course, he's done enough to win the round already from the early part. Just missing there with that double left hook Gorman, but there, you see, I, I, and, and, except for his body going underneath and round the back of the tiger like that, unless the referee says break, He's allowed to throw. Defend yourself at all times and all that to lava, but that, he's right. Unless the referee says that's enough, you keep throwing and he's hitting the target, then that's fine. But he came out like a bull out of the gate, didn't he, in that round, third round there, Gorman, and just rattled steam a little bit. Just took a little bit of a breather there in the last minute or so. But still did enough, of course, to quite comfortably win the round. Kojano still in there, though. But everything on Barry's card so far going in Second Gorman's round, direction round into the fourth.
got quite fast feet going for a big guy. If he doesn't look, you know, like, like he's going to have any sort of speed, is he, because of the shape of him? But he, he has really fast feet, so I think he could use that a little bit more to move around the target a bit. So a little feint, and then just spin around to his right. I think long term, Ricky wants to see him a little bit lighter than shot. he is. That's a good right hand, really good shot, and Kojinu just holding on. He's weighed in at 17.10 here, and he's. I mean, he's never going to be one of those with the sculpted Bruno-style oh, physique, oh. is he? But I think Ricky would like to see him closer to 17 than 18. Kojanu trying to let some punches go. And good, I mean, let's, let's Kumi lets go, he has a bit of success. I don't know why he's not throwing, throwing more shots. Well, it's so earlier about morning. all the times he's worked as a sparring partner. Maybe yeah. there's just a wee bit of that mentality. Yeah, that can happen, really can. Complaining a lot, though, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He really is. And when uh, the fighter starts moaning to the ref, you start to wonder a little. He's not under no real distress. He's been hit with some decent shots of Gorman. I think he's struggling with the, with the hand and foot speed, and it has been a... A few behind the back. Nice. Handy. That was good. Two real beefy looking body shots, those were, particularly those left hooks. You see more of it though. He showed flashes of really quality work, you just didn't see more of it. Nice, that's lovely there for Cozen. There's a little little dip and coming back with the right hand. Again, just looking towards referee Mark Lyson and wanting a little bit of help. Yeah, rightly so that time. There's two forearms on the back of the neck there. Needs to get closer, spin it closer to the target there, Gorman. And he's going to double up with that left hook when he's, when he's twisting. Kojinu again has had his moments in this round, but has he done enough to win it? No, he's been not so far, unless he has a dramatic finish. <laughs> he's been outworked. Good work ethic here from Gorman. Well, well Kojin, who's moaning and groaning, he's just going about his work and picking up the points. Well, it's something which will serve Nathan Gorman well as he progresses, hopefully, in his mind, up through the ranks. Hey, talking to the referee too much, don't talk to the referee. The referee do his job, you do your boxing, yeah? You talk too much, don't talk to the referee. It's not well, it's easy there to do his job. Talking to the referee, don't do it. Those are those body shots, and he fires in another one, same yeah, place. And they were, they were fast as well and well placed. There's Gorman there, that sort of set Gorman like when he came back with his own little flurry. But Gorman's just been workman like, he's been a high pace, working away. He's taking a few more rests, and, and rightly so, but he's the busier fighter, and that's what's given him the round so far. But Kojinu, and every now and again, you see there, nice little left hook. And just keeps Gorman a little bit honest at times, and that's good. Some people say Nathan Gorman's too nice to be a boxer. He's not quite so nice when he gets in the ring. No, I mean, how many fighters have you seen, you know, just lovely gentlemen outside and inside they're, they're maniacs? I was the other way. Yeah, I was, you took the words I, out of I my know, mouth, you knew I was going to say that. So he was a nice guy in the ring, me. And a maniac to this day outside <laughs> it. No one will believe you. Oh, but I know. Good shot, right through the guard again. Shouldn't get there from that far out, being the shorter guy, to be honest, because it just his feet are so fast for the big fella. That's what you've got to get him, Kojin, yeah. he Push him back oh, to the chair. lovely uppercut, lovely right hand, rocking back the head of the Romanian. A little bang on the chest there from Gorman as well. Got a roll there, Gorman, when he's, he could obviously just pepper him with a jab for that right hand. So if he just dips his legs a little bit, and just slip underneath it and slide forward. Even if you don't have any success with the punches, it just stops the attack. Come on. 
again Kojan who's just being outworked fifth round and on Barry's card everything so far going the way of the man from Nantwich another man from the travelling community Nathan Gorman oh, I don't know what he's complaining about that for talking to the ref again and he's suggesting to the ref that Gorman is getting away with too much. Just concentrate on the work there, Kojinuk. He's had some good, he had some success in this round again. Well, that's what his corner was saying, wasn't he? You know, sort of stop talking and get on with the fighting. Shot there from Goldman, nice little left hook. Kojinu <laughs> trying to walk him down and he gets into position and then he's so fatigued from his efforts earlier in the round, he can't let his arms go, seemingly. When he grabs you, he's turning his back, go with him and hook him, you know what I mean, when he, took, when he goes through. A few more gears now, jab as you go forward. Oh, that's a lovely shot, fantastic shot there. See, he throws it, it just follows through the, the, the combination and then comes back with a shot as well after, but that's a fantastic shot there from Nathan Gorman. Well, there's a better part of 20,000 people in here later on, and it's starting to fill up. Shot. That's good work. as though he's blowing and we've got potentially more than half the fight well half the fight remaining can't miss him with that when he jumps over that left hook he can't miss him Assess people and their potential to get right the way to the top, though, and there will be those who will say, "Is Nathan Gorman heavy-handed enough?" And that's all. Uh, it's, it's also a, a problem in any division, but in the heavyweight division, especially, it, it is extremely difficult. But then Tyson Fury is not a one-punch no, KO true artist, that and is you know, true. look how well he's done so far, and still plenty more years to come from him, you would guess. You've got to work another part of your game. Your fitness is a big thing. You have to be the busier fighter for the most part and, and really hone your skills. Oh, that's a lovely uppercut. Beautiful. Hook to the body, followed by the right uppercut. Nothing wrong with his technique or his variety, is it? That's for sure. Well, that, that, that's good there from the referee. Just a little graze underneath the eye of Gorman. No great problem so far. Those are big body shots again from Kojanu. Oh, it's a lovely combination by Kojanu. I just don't know why he, do, do, he can do more of it. Why don't he? Nice uppercut there from Kojinu as well. Gorman takes it well. And he's just being caught a bit in this sixth round. Well, he, to be fair, he did block that combination on the clips, but not that body shot. You can see, mate, when Kojinu's going to go to work, he dips his head down, he really tucks that chin into his chest. And that's a, that's a sign, that's a telltale sign, he's going to let his, let his punches go. Kojinu's having a breather now.
again though, and unless he unless he rocks and really rocks Gorman to the soles of his boots now, he's left it too late, hasn't he? Again, goes new and, and Gorman's just been a much busier fighter in this round. Not a good spell, Kozinu, but just not been able to sustain it. And looks a little bit tired as he goes back to his corner. Going to be some big names at ringside, and here's one of them arriving. Darren Till, upcoming UFC star. Liverpudlian, and he is in the building. That was a better round, that sustaining, you know what I mean? And when, you know, when he when he's moaning and complaining, that referee doesn't say break around smacking one, you know what I mean, son? Took that stiff jab working a tree. And the right hand, I found a nice few more right hands now. Because every time you threw it, it's landing. So we moved on to the second half of the fight. Scored that last round to Nathan again. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I think that was a, a, good, a good round thing. So six out of six on Barry Jones' card for the man from Nantwich. I think Kozunu in the last, I think in, in the fifth round, he, he, he could have had an argument possibly, but apart from that, I think it's all been Gorman. There we go. All Gorman to date. But I do think you're right, I think Kozun has got that sparring part of mentality, because you, to me, he's shown enough ability to make this a harder night's work for Gorman, or at least make him think more about his work. Kind of a little bit, not, not as obviously so, but Kevin Johnson, when he fought Daniel Dubois, you know, he's a yeah. man who knows how to survive, didn't throw a lot of punches. Kozun has done more, more than that. Yeah, not but, enough. Yeah, no, Johnson at, at that stage of career, which is, uh, recently is with this, he just is on survival mode all the time, autopilot. But Kozunu shows flashes of good work. Again, nice little sneaky little uppercut there from, from him. These fire periods like this is where he should be flicking that jab out. I heard Ricky Hatton telling Gorman not to have his own mental refereeing process, go with the referee, and if the referee doesn't say break, smack him one. Well, and he's right. Energy start from Gorman, and he was never going to be able to sustain what he produced in the first couple of rounds. And his work rate has just dropped off a wee bit. Oh, good left hook there from Kozunu. Again, there are not many of those landing, but it looks, looks pretty. Closing stages of this seventh round. It's been a quite an eventful round, hasn't it? Yeah, very much so. I saw a left hook there from Gorman. Well, that's arguably the least dramatic round of the <laughs> fight so far. Hard to split him, really. It wasn't, a, wasn't time, a huge amount happening in that every round. Every time you step back, water, no, mate. Come on, was it? Every time you nail, you, nail, you nail it with a combination. He steps back with his hands down. If you go bang, 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 come off, bang, and then that, you know, change your pace to take it by surprise. Because you're nailing him, bang, bang, bang. And then he just, when he, he stands back, he either moves or stands back and drops his hand. Bang, 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 come off, bang, go again. Two attacks, do you know what I mean, son? Just starting to get a bit one pace this now, 
Heel aan uit, heel aan je. Het is hier, 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 het Struggle to know exactly what these belts mean. Yeah, of course. But what it means, it gets you some sort of ranking. And builds you up. It's a, a strange system. Head break there, didn't he? Really clearly. Kunjanu is just not letting punches go now. And the fight has just begun to lack a little bit of drama. Of course, he's happy to be at, at, at this pace for him, of course. Because it's more comfortable for him. The Gorman's obviously just you know taking a breather or just running a little bit of steam, and he's not, you know, he's not as aggressive or as as fresh and as mobile as he as he was in the earlier rounds when he was darting it with attacks using a hand speed. And... Shot. Careful backing up too much there, go. I know he's, he's trying to draw the punch off from Kozin and jump in with that left hook. You, you put yourself on the ropes, it's always a worry. If this guy uses that reach and keeps it nice and long, you, know, you might be in a bit of trouble. So, working around the tag, it's always very important rather than going back in straight lines. Oh, the tag there, Gorman, with a nice yeah, left hook. Lovely left hand counter. Gorman looking to unload. Given a very sharp reminder and another. Well, blocked that three punch combination, but the right hand after it got through there from Kojinu. See what I mean? He, he, he just tucks that chin into his chest before he goes to work. And that's a sign he's going to do some stuff. I just I take a little step back every time he dipped his dipped that chin. Different fighters have different idiosyncrasies, don't they? I always remember how Nazim Hamad used to watch his opponent's feet. Yes. Again, complaining to the referee, Kojinu, as Gorman goes back to his corner, probably with another round in the bag. Yeah, but again, because Kojinu finishes strong, he makes it, more, he makes it a little bit closer than what it maybe should be. Kozunu can't think he's nicking rounds by just finishing the stronger every time or just by having a few little flurries at the end of the round. He has to be a little bit more work than like a work throughout. More jabs, more one twos. Straight punches. Don't go close to him, keep him up. Keep him up. Strong yeah. man from Burbank, one California. Kozunu is going to have to knock him out. <laughs> If he's going to win this fight now. Just four rounds remaining.
Trying to referee his own fight, isn't he? Kojinu. Yeah, a little bit. It's uh, the drama of the opening rounds has gone completely now. Yeah, well, just think if he, if, no, if he's still trying to you know, referee his own fight and went about his work, he might have made this fight a lot closer and hit a few rounds back. Well, Gorman's a mile ahead, even though the, the work rate dropped dramatically from Gorman. And that might be a worry as he steps up in levels because because he hasn't got, no, I'm not saying he can't punch, but because he hasn't got that one punch finish like a Joshua, means he's going to have to be the busy fighter throughout. So that's, that's another thing. That, and, but it's good because you find the things out about him as he, as he steps up the levels, and that's what it's all about stepping up. You find out your strengths and, and what your weaknesses are to improve and move forward. Shot. Kojinu urging him to come forward, try his luck. Trying to punish him with the right hand. Not able to find a target on that occasion. Double jab, no go. So one to the chest. We'll start off a real solid one with the chest. And then let that right hand go. Solid right hand to the body from Kojanu, but too little, too late again, you'd suspect. <laughs> Starting to look as though Nathan oh, Gorman's going to have to go the distance again, though. Well, unless he ups the work rate, I think, I think that's going to be the case, yeah. He didn't want to do the build. We're going down to his plodding fucking feet. It's good there from Gorman, just adjusting the feet. You know, seen it. He was going to throw the combination, he's seen Kozen, who's seen it, and Blind was going to block it, so just took a little step to the right and let the left hand go over the top. That was probably the only highlight of that round, let's be honest. There weren't too many. He started so brightly, Gorman, but just losing his way a little. I, I think that's what makes it worse, though, because it was such a bright start. So you're expecting a real that, that for every round, and obviously when it drops a bit, you get a little bit, a little bit disappointed. So, tenth round. Kojinu talking to Gorman. Well, his mouth moved more than his hands, let's be honest, in this fight. Shots. A nice right hand yeah. from Gorman. Started off with that jab to the chest, though, see, John? Yep. Just a little bit, you no, know, just takes, takes the vision, takes the, the interest, of the, the, his concentration just a little bit lower than the chin. And he saw that right hand on the top. Come back with the left hook as well. He didn't even know he hit the target. He was looking for space to do his work there, Gorman, but I just think he goes back a little bit too much. Rather than, rather than just move around the target. Janu looking as though he's definitely going to do the distance now as we move inexorably closer to our main event. There's a right hand from Kojanu, only a glancing blow, though. I think the second shot was a decent shot. If he, to see if he can sustain that. No, the force Gorman to, to fight back. Hearing that uh, there's been some more florid language in the corner, if uh, 
you picked that up. Our apologies for that, but it does happen. Oh, oh great shot. shot. And he's encouraging Gorman to come forward, risk it, put it on him. Well, Gorman rolled at him just before that, I think. That's good there from Gorman. What are the guys talking? You keep throwing punches. I suppose he's. I imagine he's telling him, "You're not hurting me." Yes. Flashes of uh, Ali Foreman way back in the 70s. Is that all you got, George? Except that uh, Ali came off and did a bit more than Kojinu's done. What was it like ringside, John? I wasn't there. Yeah, I know those yes, who were, was, though, and they yes, told me. Was. I watched it on telly. No, you, you were there, working. Good round for Gorman, this one. Playful pat on the head from Kojinu as Gorman went back to the corner. Fantastic shot, not the first time he's thrown that little combination in this fight. Right through the guys, beautiful. There he is. Took it well though, didn't he? Well, he takes a good shot. And it's well delivered from Gorman, good technique. A great shot, great, great little, uh, little slow-mo there, look at that. Every time. Makes you think what a punch it was from Luis Ortiz, which put the big oh. fella away. Two rounds still to go, and it's not full yet, not yet, not by a long way, but it will be, it will be as we come closer to our main event, the world featherweight title fight, Josh Warrington against Carl Frampton. Gorman trying to up his work rate. Well, I think, I think to be honest, for Gorman, for, for perception, even though he's winning the fight, he's won the fight hands down as he gets stopped. For me, I think a strong finish will look good. But your last memory will be on. Oh, oh, lovely shot. shot again. Kojinu shakes his head as much as to say, well, it's not hurt me, or maybe he was shaking his head as much as to say, how on earth did I get caught by that? But caught he was. I think it's the speed, this is obviously it's not just the foot speed, the hand speed, it's the foot speed as well of Gorman. I think, I think he's been struggling with that. Complaining to the referee for the upteenth time, Rasvan Kojanu. Shot. He got one back though. Good left hand again from Gorman, who's really trying to punch through the targets here. He's definitely upping the ante, but back comes Kojinu. At last, a bit more feisty. <laughs> and that's what we want to see, you know, from Gorman tried to do that in the early parts of the round, and Kojinu didn't want to engage, but at least now he's trying to, trying to fire back. Gotta keep that work here, no Gorman. Just finish the finish the round strong. Have a big push in the last round. Eleventh round near nearing its conclusion. It's another Gorman round.
Well, fire back. If he's not hurting you, then fire back and be competitive. Chatting away again at Gorman. He can talk all he likes, but he's not talking himself towards a win. So here's some of the action from that round, from round 11. And this is where Gorman was really trying to power on, and you can see him punching right through the target, but Kojanu managed to turn him in the end and landed a couple of little right hands of his own there. Well, he takes the shot well and he fires back, but if he would have been doing this earlier, this would have been much more entertaining fight. And also, I think it would have made Gorman step up the level a little bit more. But listen, Gorman's been massively dominant. You know, it's, it's been the other guy's fight to chase, let's be, let's be fair. And it's been a great start for Gorman. If he can finish strong as well, then I think it'll be, they'll be happy, the corner will be more than happy with the result. So the two touch gloves. There's been plenty of chat. Let's see what the last three minutes is going to deliver. Oh, it delivered a couple of uh, decent right hands from Kojinu, but I think they were blocked by Gorman. And that'll be, you want Kojinu to really go for it in the last round, but also to be frustrating the fact that he could have done more. And it's hard, and it's hard for someone like Gorman there, who's not a massive concussive hitter, with one punch hitter. He's in a guy who doesn't, the guy, there's a guy who doesn't want to you know, engage in anything for the most part. And it's been a bit negative. What makes it worse, I think he could have been more competitive. That's, that's the sad part. It's not a guy who, who has got the ability to, you know, this guy who's boxed at a decent level. But again, for me, Gorman, he's, so, he's shown flashes of, of really good work. Started well, but then lost his way in the middle round slightly. And maybe he just started a little bit too fast for himself, maybe, as well. Again, that, but that going back in straight lines like he does there, and I know what he's trying to do, he's trying to draw the lead and counter, but I think you know, he goes back too fast, he's a big fella, so it's only three steps that are on the ropes. There's a good left hand from Gorman. Kojinu punching his gloves together in frustration. But it's going to be, unless something exceptional happens here from Kojinu, then it's going to, it looks like it's going to be another comprehensive win here for, for Gorman in a 12 round fight. Against a guy who's boxed for a world title and on tape, but it looks like a fantastic win, and well, it is. Well, you've given uh, one round level and the rest all to Gorman. I think so. I think maybe the fifth you could have given to Coles. You know, if you know, that was the, probably the closest round, but I think apart from that, he's, when he's done good work, he's left it too late to do it. Nice body, body shot. shot. And, of course, here he is. He's got a 12-rounder under his yeah. belt, which is by no means a bad thing. As you move on, especially for these big fellas, they're dragged into the trenches. You know, they really do run out of steam. Loading up with shots as they do big guys and you know, carrying all our weight around. Coming up then towards the final bell. Kojinu on the front foot, trying to wing in a big left hook, but Gorman saw it coming from a long way back and just tying his man up. And, an, and another complaint towards the referee from Kojinu, who feels that Gorman got away with just a little bit too much, but there can't be any doubt that he's come away as a very clear winner. No, he's won. He, he's won without a shadow of a doubt. And, and, and this guy showed flashes of, uh, that he could be that he could be competitive if, 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 his, if he was more ambitious. And maybe, you know, that would, I think that would have brought out the best in Gorman. But we've seen flashes of good work from Gorman. It's been positive. He finished quite strong as well. And just those middle rounds there where he, where he was conserving his energy or running out of a bit of steam. You sort, you sort of worry there that you know, a guy who doesn't carry that a massive KO power, that he's going to have to be busy in every round to keep these bigger guys away. But you can't fault his, his punch variety. 
There's that big left hand. He sort of punched his gloves together, Kozinu, afterwards. Gorman's foot speed, his hand speed, and, and, it, and his variety of his combinations, when, when, when he really goes for it, makes him a difficult man to, to, to come up against for, for these big guys. Judges' scorecards are just being tallied by the WBC supervisor. Thomas Triber waiting expectantly, leaning against the ropes. We're going to have that uh, verdict before too long. There he is. Kojinu having a natter with one or two of his supporters in that corner. And there are the wise man's deliberations. And we still wait. Thomas Triver doesn't miss a trick, just look at him there. He won't stand for any jiggery-pokery. <laughs> For the most part, fought in a good spirit. Referee had a little bit of criticism from the Romanian quarter. And I think now we have got the result. We have indeed, so the two fighters now are being drawn to centre ring. And on Barry's card, by a very, very wide margin, it's going to be Nathan Gorman. Let's see what the reality is. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Both judges, David Billow Sirkowick and Victor Lachlan, score at the same 119 to 109. And Judge Eddie Papo scores it 120 to 108. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. And still, WBC International Silver Heavyweight Champion, Nathan Gorman. So two judges having it exactly as Barry did, 119-109. The third, a complete shutout, giving, giving Nathan Gorman every round. And his undefeated record continues. He's still the WBC International Silver Champion.